Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca, your narrator for today's story. Like many of you, I've navigated through my fair share of challenges, especially with my mother-in-law, Emma. She's the kind of person who loves to take control and often crosses boundaries that my husband, Anthony, and I set, despite us warning her multiple times. Unfortunately, Anthony and I weren't the best at enforcing these boundaries, allowing Emma to have a significant influence over our lives for quite some time. It's not that she was outright rude or disliked me, but she definitely found ways to express that she was less than thrilled by me. She didn't shy away from criticizing my personal style, and strangely enough, she didn't spare her son from such comments either. The list of things she's done without our approval is long, but one striking example is our wedding. Emma took it upon herself to change everything from our decorations and flowers to our cake. We managed to stop her from changing the venue, but for everything else, we either had to go along with her choices or lose money. Even when confronted, her response was always that she believed she knew best and had better taste than us. Despite her expensive taste, her respect for our choices was minimal, which was both insulting and frustrating. Anthony, for his part, found it hard to stand up to his mother. Cutting off contact wasn't something he considered, so I tried my best to ignore her interference. Things were stable for a while until Emma found a new way to impose her opinions on us. After years of saving, Anthony and I bought our dream house. It was perfect for us, and I took great care in decorating it to reflect our personalities and tastes. However, Emma's reaction upon seeing it was less than pleasant. She criticized our choice and the way we decorated it, claiming it looked cheap and tasteless. She insisted that we should have consulted her, but we made it clear that it was our decision, and we were happy with our home as it was. Despite her protests and offers to fix our home to her liking, we stood firm in our decision. Our home was a reflection of us, not her, and we intended to keep it that way. In sharing this story, my hope is not only to vent, but to connect with those who might be going through similar struggles. It's a reminder that while we can't always control the actions of others, we can choose how we respond and hold on to what's important to us. I wasn't a fan of how Emma, always so forceful, insisted we make changes to our home based on her advice. This time, though, Anthony and I were determined to keep her from meddling. Despite her numerous attempts to sway us through texts, calls, and unexpected visits, we stood our ground. But Emma wasn't one to give up easily. She found a more cunning approach. To celebrate finally purchasing our home after years of saving, Anthony and I decided to treat ourselves to a short vacation out of state. It had been a long time since we'd been able to get away, and with some money left over, it seemed like the perfect opportunity. Our house was meant to be empty during our trip, but a neighbor, a kind gentleman in his 70s, offered to watch over it. He promised to alert us if anything seemed out of the ordinary, not that we were expecting any trouble. Our surprise was palpable when he called to inform us that he saw four women entering our house. Alarmed, we pressed for details, and the description of one woman unmistakably matched Emma. In a mix of confusion and irritation, Anthony and I needed to understand what was happening. I called Emma directly to confront her. Emma, what are you doing at our house? Our neighbor saw you and some people entering. She nonchalantly replied, Oh, I'll be staying here for two weeks with my friends. Just four of them, but don't worry, no wild parties or anything. We thought it'd be nice to spend some quality time together. Plus, your house could use some looking after. Think of it as us house-sitting for you. But we're not even home. Why would you bring your friends over without us being there? I asked, bewildered. Don't fret. I'll entertain them. And with the recent break-ins around your neighborhood, consider this as us keeping your place secure. It's better this way, especially considering all the valuables you and Anthony have. We wouldn't want anything to go missing now, would we? Emma reasoned. While Emma's justification seemed to have a point, her method of going about it was entirely unasked for and invasive. It highlighted yet another instance of her crossing boundaries, albeit under the guise of concern and security for our new home. Emma's tone during our conversation left me feeling uneasy and highly suspicious. Her casual mention of house-sitting seemed a bit too convenient, as if she had orchestrated this visit well in advance. The fact that she arrived with friends unannounced, knowing well that we weren't home, raised several red flags for me. It appeared she had used her key to gain entry into our home, and I shuddered to think what would have happened had our neighbor not noticed and informed us immediately. I was grateful for his vigilance, yet I couldn't help but feel my gratitude was premature as something unsettling loomed in my thoughts. I shared my concerns with Anthony, 
expressing how uncomfortable it made me that Emma was bringing strangers into our home. It just didn't sit right with me, and I struggled to understand her motives. Anthony seemed to take it in stride, believing it to be fortunate that someone was looking after our home, which might deter burglaries. But my worries extended beyond potential theft. Emma's history of overstepping boundaries was well documented in our experiences with her, and this felt like another glaring example. Anthony tried to reassure me, suggesting that we address the issue with Emma once we returned home. He acknowledged that his reluctance to confront his mother had to end, especially given her recent actions. Understanding his difficulty, given that Emma had raised him alone, I still felt anxious, not fully appeased by Anthony's resolve. Our neighbor's call the next day intensified my anxiety. He inquired if we were still on vacation, to which I explained Emma and her friend's presence at our house under the guise of keeping it safe. His next words stopped us cold. He reported hearing a lot of noise from our home, not typical sounds of occupancy, but more akin to renovation work. This unexpected news left Anthony and I speechless, pondering the extent of Emma's actions in our absence. The situation was becoming more alarming by the minute, challenging our initial perceptions and forcing us to confront the reality of what we might find upon our return. The revelation from our neighbor made everything click into place. Emma, my mother-in-law, had been vocal about her disdain for my home decorating skills, deeming them tasteless and insisting on her superior guidance to beautify our home. Her sudden cessation of complaints following the news of our brief getaway now resonated with ominous clarity. Anthony speculated on the nature of the noises, wondering if perhaps there was a misunderstanding, but the neighbor's observations of interior decoration deliveries and the sight of Emma and her friends actively participating in these changes dispelled any doubts. It turned out one of Emma's companions was a known interior decorator, a detail that only solidified our suspicions. The thought of Emma taking it upon herself to overhaul our home's interior without our consent was heart-wrenching. Both Anthony and I were in a state of disbelief and panic, grappling with the reality of her unwelcome intrusions. Expressing our gratitude to the neighbor for his vigilance, we clarified that Emma's actions were unauthorized, underscoring the gravity of the situation. Overwhelmed by frustration and the urgent need to intervene, I declared the vacation over, unable to enjoy a moment more under the weight of this betrayal. Anthony shared in my distress, apologizing for his mother's unbridled actions, baffled by her decision to involve friends in this unwarranted project. Faced with no other option to halt Emma's endeavors before more damage was done, I contemplated involving the authorities. However, the thought of calling the police on Emma was distressing for Anthony. The necessity of the situation outweighed our reservations. With Anthony's reluctant consent, I proceeded to request a welfare check from the police citing the ongoing, unexplained disturbances at our home as reported by our neighbor. This decisive action, though drastic, felt like the only viable step to safeguard our home from further unsanctioned alterations. When I called the police, I withheld my suspicions but mentioned that my mother-in-law and some guests were staying at our house. Given the recent spike in burglaries, the police took my concern seriously and conducted a welfare check. The feedback from the officers was nothing short of shocking. They reported back that our home was in chaos, with ongoing demolition causing dust and damage everywhere. My carefully chosen decorations were mishandled or missing, a testament to the disregard for our belongings. Upon returning home, the reality was as bad as the police had described, if not worse. The images they shared revealed the extent of the havoc wrought during our absence. Overwhelmed by the scene, I was inconsolable, experiencing an intense emotional breakdown. Anthony, though deeply angered, maintained enough composure to engage directly with the police. He made it clear that his mother had overstepped massively, undertaking renovations without our permission and causing significant damage. The officers on site sympathized with our plight, acknowledging the financial and emotional toll of the unauthorized alterations. Faced with the choice of pressing charges for the destruction of property, Anthony and I agreed. We wanted to hold Emma accountable for her actions. The police were supportive, offering to initiate the legal process on our behalf and promising to provide further documentation of the damage. In the meantime, we arranged for my sister to watch over the house until we could return. Anthony took charge, ensuring that his mother faced consequences for her recklessness. Despite my state of distress, hurling every curse I could think of at Emma, 
Anthony managed the situation with a level of calm and decisiveness that was nothing short of heroic. He promptly arranged for our return flights, determined to address the aftermath of Emma's intrusion as swiftly as possible. Our immediate focus was on rectifying the situation and beginning the process of rebuilding what had been carelessly torn apart. Anthony and I wasted no time upon our return to our hometown. We headed straight to the police station to take formal action against Emma's unauthorized renovation of our home. We provided the officers with photographs of our home's original state alongside the devastation Emma had inflicted. The officers, visibly appalled by the extent of the damage, suggested we pursue legal action for the havoc wreaked. My frustration and anger reached a boiling point. I was determined to ensure Emma learned a harsh lesson for her actions. Our decision to confront her at the police station, where she was being held, was driven by a need to face her directly and make her understand the gravity of her actions. Upon seeing us, Emma's response was one of feigned innocence and confusion, questioning the reason for her incarceration as if unaware of the chaos she had caused. Her lack of remorse and continued insistence that she was merely helping us by imposing her taste on our home was infuriating. Anthony, equally incensed, confronted her delusion head on, challenging her audacity and disregard for our wishes and property. Emma's defense was steeped in entitlement, asserting that her intentions were to enhance our home, oblivious to the personal and financial turmoil she had caused. She dared to critique my tastes and proposed to fix everything if released, not grasping the severity of her actions. However, our resolve was unyielding. We informed her that she would not be allowed near our home again and that we were pressing charges for property destruction. The reality of facing legal consequences finally seemed to dawn on Emma as she saw the determination in our stance. Panic set in, and she turned to Anthony, tearfully attempting to portray me as the villain for insisting on accountability, pleading for his intervention. Her plea, however, fell on deaf ears. We were united in our decision to see through the legal process, ensuring Emma faced the repercussions of her unwarranted intrusion and alteration of our home. The sight of Emma grasping the reality of her situation marked a pivotal moment in our stand against her overbearing and invasive behavior. Anthony supported my stance unequivocally in the face of Emma's astonishment. Mom, Rebecca's right. By transforming our home according to your preferences, you've disregarded our boundaries time after time. This was one step too far, he firmly stated, highlighting the breach of trust and respect that had occurred. Despite Emma's protests and attempts to sway Anthony with emotional appeals, he remained steadfast. He pointed out the necessity of compensation for the extensive damages she caused, emphasizing the serious financial implications. Emma, faced with the reality of her actions and their consequences, broke down. She hadn't anticipated the lawsuit or the significant dent in her savings it would entail. Her tears and pleas for mercy were a stark departure from her previous entitlement. However, her claim of financial hardship did little to sway our decision. You should have considered the consequences before undertaking such drastic actions, we countered. Her appeals for leniency, cloaked in claims of good intentions, were dismissed. Anthony and I saw through the facade, recognizing it as another manipulation tactic. Our resolve was firm. Despite Emma's tearful apologies and last-minute remorse, the damage to our home and trust was irreparable. Leaving her at the police station, we headed home, ready to rebuild from the turmoil she had caused. Emma's release on bail and subsequent uninvited appearance at our home only reinforced our decision. Anthony once again firmly delineated our boundaries, insisting on no further contact. Emma's desperate attempts to regain favor did nothing but affirm the necessity of our actions. In setting these boundaries and holding her accountable, we sought to protect our home, our peace, and our future from further disruption. Despite the turmoil, Anthony and I decided to remain in our home, which, although damaged, was still habitable. We awaited restitution through legal proceedings. Ultimately, the court ruled in our favor, mandating Emma to compensate us significantly. She narrowly escaped incarceration, but was also ordered to cover our legal expenses. The judge expressed his disdain for her actions quite vocally, reducing Emma to tears once again. However, our sympathy for her had long since evaporated. She was merely facing the consequences of her actions. Emma's social circle, including the friends she had involved in her scheme, swiftly distanced themselves, unwilling to be associated with her follies. Following the court's decision, Emma approached us, tearfully appealing for forgiveness and lamenting her financial hardships. 
exacerbated by the cessation of the extra financial support Anthony had been providing. Anthony had been generously giving his mother an allowance for years, but decided to halt it in light of her destructive behavior and subsequent legal troubles. Emma's plea for assistance, highlighting her dire financial straits, failed to move us. Anthony, firm in his resolve, emphasized the importance of facing the repercussions of one's actions, highlighting that her entitlement had necessitated this harsh lesson. Emma's suggestion of moving into our guest room as a means to reconcile and perhaps regain financial stability was met with an unequivocal refusal. Anthony made it clear that she was no longer welcome in our home or lives, signaling a period of no contact to allow us to heal and reassess her place in our lives, if any. Emma's reaction to Anthony's stance was one of disbelief and desperation, culminating in a poignant scene on our doorstep. However, having witnessed her manipulative tactics firsthand, we were unmoved by her tears and remained steadfast in our decision to sever ties. In the months that followed, we experienced a newfound peace. The absence of Emma's judgmental presence allowed both Anthony and I to embrace a more carefree and positive outlook on life. This ordeal has prompted us to contemplate maintaining this distance permanently, hopeful for a future free of turmoil and interference. As we navigate this journey, we seek support and understanding, hopeful that this decision will lead to the fulfilling life we've always envisioned.